There is a certain quality to the fight photographs around the turn of the 20th century, particularly the old portraits, as we stare back at individuals who were moulded by tougher times. With fights sometimes exceeding the 20 round mark, as boxers wailed away at each other with much smaller gloves, toughness had a higher currency. Adolphus Wolgast was more than tough. He would remind us that in the ring, just like it is on the battlefield, there are varying degrees of bravery. Back when the lightweight limit was 133 pounds, Ad was still relatively small, around five foot four, and with a modest reach. These physical limitations found their expression in viciousness, leading to a nickname, the Michigan Wildcat. Turning professional in 1906 at the age of 18, Ad was introduced as Kid Wolgast, later changed to the abridgment of his first name. Less than three years in, and Ad was already a serious contender, having picked up some invaluable experience against the likes of the great featherweight, A. Battelle. During the early 1900s, most bouts were subject to the no decision ruling, whereby, unless there was a knockout, no official winner would be declared. It was a ploy to try and separate boxing from gambling. In July of 1909, Ad bumped into the lightweight champion of the world for the first time, battling Nelson. Though while some newspapers gave him the nod, none of this would matter until they fought again, next year, for the title. February 22nd, 1910, Point Richmond, California. The Durable Dane and the Michigan Wildcat went to war in a fight that was scheduled for 45 rounds. Along with Nelson's first fight against Joe Gans, Stanley Ketchell's against Joe Thomas, and Joe Jeanette's against Sam McVeigh, this was one of the true epics under Queensbury rules. In a savage encounter, both men hacking away at each other, Wolgas was briefly floored in the 22nd before dusting himself off and continuing to wage war. In round 40, referee Eddie Smith had seen enough carnage there was a new lightweight champion of the world. For those who had witnessed the science of Joe Gans, this wasn't exactly easy on the eye, but scraps of the fight film do remain, and in it can be seen an incredible pace that wasn't typical during this era of boxing. In a reign that lasted almost three years, Ad defended his title five times, each one by knockout. The last, however, remains one of the great controversies under Queensbury rules. In July of 1912, Ad squared off against Joe Rivers, who at just 20 years of age was full of confidence and led the early goings with superior boxing ability. Dropped in the sixth, Ad got up to turn it into more his kind of fight. But despite the fact they traded knockdowns in the 11th, in another classic fight, nobody could have predicted what was next. In the 13th, both men landed simultaneously and were dropped hard. Ad is said to have landed a left hand just over the groin, Rivers a right hand to the jaw. Amid cries of foul, referee Jack Welch may have even tried to help Ad to his feet. His official decision of KO 13, however, remained. Over in Rivers' dressing room, by one report, he is said to have produced an aluminium groin protector with a clear dent in it. In November of the same year, Ad met his match against Willie Ritchie, whose clever boxing frustrated those feral ways. The fouls were easier to see, and Wolgast was disqualified in the 16th. Prior to the Ritchie fight, Ad had issued a newspaper statement in which he claimed, win or lose, encouraged by his wife, he did intend to retire soon. That, of course, didn't come to pass. He continued to fight, frequently, against many of the men who would go on to challenge Benny Leonard. His memory and cognitive abilities wilting under each blow, Ad would continue to fight, even resuming the madness after World War I until the plug was officially pulled in 1920. Fight promoter Jack Doyle became his legal guardian, allowing Ad to train at his house. 
but the only way to pacify this damaged fighter was to reassure him daily that he was training for a fight. In 1927, Ad was admitted to Stockton State Hospital. For the remainder of his life, movement would be restricted, behavior supervised. A prisoner left shadow boxing with his demons. Along with old rival battling Nelson, also suffering from illnesses relating to head trauma, Ad's final years were indeed confusing and lonely ones. In 1955, Adolphus Wolgast was no more. I'm sure the last thing he ever forgot was how to throw a punch. Though I do hope he was able to recall that brief period when fortune smiled on him when he was on top of the world. <laughs>